Hi, I'm Eric, and I'm going to talk really fast. <clears throat> so I have software that I want to build. That's a lie. I hate building software. I want to use software. But sometimes that means I have to compile software. Sometimes that software isn't done or doesn't quite do what I need. So I actually mean that I need to patch and then compile and then build and then maybe use software. And after I've done all that work, maybe I need to share that software so anyone else can do what I did. This gets into the domain sometimes known as package management. There are many different ways to go about package management. This is roughly the fourth lightning talk at the camp about package management. Um, so this one's going to aim to be the most uh, out to space, the most deeply reconsidering take on this topic that you'll hear today and try to reach a little bit of a different place by going just to the most metaform instead of the concretes. So, yeah. <coughs> so despite some of the first words I used being building, what's tricky isn't building. We have build tools. We have lots of build tools. We have more build tools than I could possibly list. I didn't even try. We've had build tools of various kinds for decades. Building isn't the problem. What's tricky is integrating. What's tricky is figuring out how to connect different build processes together. What's tricky is figuring out how to compose whole systems out of this. So in figuring out how to integrate things, I think it's sometimes best to figure out how to break that problem down first. So what is a build? I would say, and these are all just opinions, by the way, but we'll explore more opinions later. Um, a build involves a bunch of files going in. Conveniently, we have a file system called IPFS, which is really good at identifying files. Eventually, some files come out, and some sort of an action takes place in the middle, or whatever that is. So one idea that I'd like to throw out is maybe, maybe we could build better ways of doing builds and better ways of integrating them if we did something like this with IPLD, our interplanetary linked data format. Because what would that imply? It would mean we could take a hash of this whole instruction of a build and we could go from content addressable, just addressing files by their content hash, to computation addressable. This could be a primary key into like a totally different way of doing computation. You could use this for lots of things. It's a very useful building block to making larger, more interesting systems. You can share complete instructions for a build. You can rebuild things later. You could share these for bug reports. They're context-free. That's a really useful thing and all-inclusive. Good for bug reporting. Good for audit logs. Good for, does this go backwards? No, I don't know how to go backwards. Um, <coughs> having output hashes at the end of a process. Oh, there we go. Yeah, if you have the hash of a file system that comes out of a build, it's really, really useful for checking reproducibility as opposed to assuming that processes are deterministic and reproducible. So this is a general uh, a forcing function for sanity. This helps us build sane systems. But this is just breaking down the concept of a build. So now let's try to integrate again. Let's try to build a bigger system with that. It's really useful to be able to address builds that we've already drafted once. But this doesn't solve a lot of problems. This just gets started. Nobody likes copying and pasting hashes. And in order to build larger systems that have more than one part of a build in them, or different build tools, different compilers, whatever, we'll need a way to describe multiple steps of builds and describe their relationships in advance. And this will be just essential to any kind of productivity. So describing multiple steps and relating them in advance means we can't use hashes. We don't have a thing to hash yet. So we have a naming problem. Hooray. Distributed naming problems are hard. I think everybody in the room knows that. Anybody who's wrestled with it has, has known. So we tried to integrate a little bit, and we got to a naming problem. So let's try to break it down again. Maybe if we break down the problem enough, it will get easier. Now this is going to go very meta. I'm barely talking about package management at all for a moment here. There are lots of different kinds of naming. Sometimes I use naming for labeling. Sometimes I'm going to want to uh, name nodes in a graph just so that I can identify different nodes even when they're topologically identical. Sometimes when I say naming, I mean I'm going to look for updates, the latest thing with some name. Sometimes I want to use naming with some sort of prefix pattern just to do grouping and categorization. Sometimes I'm trying to use it for reputation. All these are very different user stories, and maybe by breaking them down, well, some of these we might find to be a lot easier. For example, naming just to label things can still be an immutable thing. You can make immutable name references in some context. 
if you want to label stuff in a graph, you only need unique names within the context of the graph. So some of these problems are much easier to solve than others. Some of these problems are also interesting because they entangle application logic, such as the concept of updating. Package managers, it turns out, have different opinions about how to get up to date on things. So I think this is a general lesson for distributed system design. Anytime you can turn a distributed naming problem into a locally scoped naming problem, do it. It's much easier. Then come back to it and try to make it composable. So for example, I might make some locally scoped naming system to connect a bunch of things in a graph of builds, and it would be easy. I just use some locally unique name. But to integrate into bigger systems again, part of the problem becomes collaboration with other people. And now, it's not so easy. But we have this whole stack of content addressable things. We have this whole protocol called IPLD, which is about helping us make other content addressable messages easily. So what happens if we take this concept of locally scoped names in some contextually limited size of graph, and we just keep slowly expanding that definition of locally scoped? And we make message passing systems between different scopes, which are themselves all content addressable messages. So we can continue building bigger and bigger Merkle trees, which are all immutable in some scope, but give us functionally the kind of composable, integratable naming that we want. I'm almost out of time already, but you can talk to me later or find lots more docs and prototypes of systems at these links. Um, these are some tools for building language agnostic build integration systems. Ta-da!